hello students you might have gone through the the theorem of the literary terms in our or oh, say earlier lectures we have gone through some of the important topic of course these terms are very important in our studies as we go about we must understand that the term the topic are equally relevant in the first unit itself this uh, so called literary terms are in the background but just to have the balance in the syllabus of course you may find the literary in criticism as a difficult uh, subject to cope with but instead of that uh, you can deliberately go through the uh, the topic that you wish to study will find you uh, definitely a very relevant and very easy so the balance has been made some of the topic you may find difficult but some of the topic in the prescribed syllabus will find you definitely you will find uh, a bit of easier so the balance has been made in this particular say so called topic in our say uh, there is that we are going to see the next term from the unit first and that is imagery say imagery as we know is images okay images that we see the objects the things around us in the physical form so this type of image are very much part and parcel of literature part and parcel and more over it's about the poetry but instead of all that you must understand that imagery is significant and most commonly discussed in the literary criticism criticism as we have discussed in the very introduction of our syllabus that criticism is the evaluation is the judgment that we form of the literary text or literary work of art and these literary work of arts may be studied in detail we can have some opinions we can have some evaluation of its multifaceted side of the literary text so in the in our so so called studies definitely this paper is going to highlight and make you adept develop your skills in the literary criticism or as a reader you can form your own opinion so it's a kind of a basic training in the judgment in forming your own opinions in criticizing or some types of expression of your ideas and views on the literary text so this paper is going to be useful for you so imagery is a most often discussed term in literary criticism and as so uh, say the meaning definitely imagery has most variable type of meaning sometimes it may be so uh, so called in the poem we see the use of words okay use of words hints at the objects suppose a rose word is r o s e rose word is r o s e spell but it hints at the rose in the real its flower it doesn't indicate the red rose or white rose but definitely we have the variation in meaning on what type of rose the petals okay red rose yellow rose white rose what but definitely the rose itself the word is variable in its meaning 
So in the sense, imagery, it's, it refers to the, the mental pictures that is experienced by the reader from the poem. A poem may have a series of images to express its meaning. The very use of words itself in the poem or the objects and the images that are referred in the poem may be called as images and these words and these images and objects that are referred in the poem may have the picture in front of you in front of the readers or the students and whatever the students or the readers experienced out of these so-called images and forms its own meaning out of these objects may be called as imagery. So to study a poem is to study the images because poem is made out of images. And that is what there are so many such critics, especially new critics from the 1920s and 30s onwards, we have seen the emphasis on the use of words and use of imagery. The theory propounded by new critics hints at the very base of the significance of these imagery. And that is what it makes us relevant to study this particular, say, under the new crusades. See De Levis in his poetic image in 1948 that an image is a picture made out of words, that a poem may be itself an image composed from the multiplicity of images. So, poem or poetic image stands for the creation of the picture, creation of a meaning out of the words that the poet has used. And there may be multiplicity, it's kind of a bouquet. Various flowers are arranged in its own plus to look and to make it more beautiful. So like this, imagery is said to make the poem concrete with the help of these images rather than making it more abstract. And that is what we have imagery. It, it stands for the language of the poetry. Imagery means it stands for the images taken collectively. Imagery refers to the collective sense of the uh, images. It refers to all objects or qualities in the poem or literature by literal expression, by allusions or by vehicles, that is secondary references of its similes and metaphors. So there is a most variable meaning to the imagery. So imagery, it stands for all objects and qualities in the poem. The, it need not be the physical or uh, say concrete objects. It may be referred to the qualities also in the poem or in the literature. And by literal expression or by some kind of uses of allusions, references. Vehicles, we have vehicles say in similes and metaphors. So a very good uh, so-called use of imagery that we find in William Wordsworth, it dwelt among the untrodden ways, springs in, in the poem. We have the images like untrodden ways, springs, grave, as well as violet has been used as metaphor. So in the sense, Imagery stands for the similes, metaphors. It may be explicitly expressed in the form of so-called imageries. Some readers 
those who are very attentive is able to means these readers are very much associated with the so visual pictures that the author has presented the poet has presented if the reader is ready to associate is readied his mind is called as a visual reader and some readers of course do not so these types of images that we see there are types of images like auditory means that we can listen to tactile it stands for the touch there are thermal type of images means it refers to thermal it stands for the temperature heat or cold olfactory it stands for the smells means we can smell um, such a type of images so it refers to the smell gustatory so it's, it stands for the test see kinesthetic it refers to the sensations of movement so these are the types of images that we see and it need not be the physical objects but there are other types of say images that we see so images need not be physical or objects in the physical or concrete sense of the term it may be tactile thermal olfactory gustatory kinesthetic at the same time if we give the reference from in memoriam by tennyson in the poem he encompasses not only the visible qualities of the images but qualities of smell heard and bit station in summer and winter also the poetic beautiful poetic lines and loud that beach will gather brown and many rose a carnation feed with summer spice the humming bird humming air see so here we have the this type of say humming air summer spice the trap summer spice spice spices a travis humming humming here so a travis to the smell okay smell of spices masale cha padarthancha vas tya sandhyakancha vales tyamade rose carnation feed see carnation and rose all these flowers are contributing to that smell in say you will find in summer spice and rose and carnation feed such a beautiful atmosphere has been depicted in this poetic lines by tennyson imagery is moreover used narrowly to signify only specific of visible objects seen in vivid descriptions particularized it refers to the specific signify visible objects since in vivid descriptions in a particular sense so it creates a kind of a picture in front of you the picture stands for some significance to the the development of a thought poetic thought development of particular team ideas and views that the author is trying to express through his poetic uh, say language and if it is in novels and dramas definitely he may be hinting at some kind of a uh, themes so to discuss about moreover imagery signifies also in the figurative language imagery is the vehicles of metaphors and similes imagery stands for the secondary subject means secondary subject is applied to the primary subject tenor so the imagery is a uh, imagery are uh, the vehicles and tenor 
definitely we have primary subjects to which the secondary subjects are applied. The new critics, as I told you, after 1930s, stressed imagery as an essential component of poetry. Means poetry cannot be without imagery because the words are needs to be used, words are there. Emotional, say, language, the sense perception words through which the writer or the poet tries to express his soul, brings out his ideas and images his visions in the form of words. So, imagery forms the, an essential component in poetry and as major factor in the poetic meaning, structure and effect. The totality or in total, if we count these images, it forms the meaning of the poem it stands for the structure as they as the uses of imagery goes above next to okay is progressing so it forms the structure of the imagery a structure it stands for the structure of the work of art and in what way the effect is generated out of these images in the very good example caroline's perfume she studied these images and there is a very good uh, say uh, research and study opportunities in the sense that she has awakened for all the, the so-called students of English literature to explore. Caroline Spurgeon in her Shakespeare's imagery and what it tells us 1935 made a count of images. She counted, actually she counted one, two, three, four, like this. She counted the imagery used in Shakespeare's drama and how meaning is formed out of these dramas. So she has studied the images used in Twelfth Night, studied images in Hamlet and King Lear. And she found the images of death, absurdity, pain and suffering in Hamlet. Animal imagery means many animal imageries are used. Images are used by Shakespeare in King Lear. So to talk about imagery in King Lear is to talk about animal imagery, especially used in King Lear. So it stands for all, say the, and these imageries has something great to contribute in the thematic development of the plot of the drama of the poem. So in Shakespeare's dramatic speeches and actions, definitely how the meaning is structured and she called these as thematic imagery. So like this, the structure is generated, the meaning is formed with the help of imagery. It stands for the picture. It makes it concrete picture by giving this broader, say, imagery. So it creates an overall, say, tempo, overall meaning, background, to the structure or to the ambience. Ambience means an atmosphere in the literary text. So to create a, an ambience in the literary text, the author or the poet hints at these types of imagery that helped, that helps him to make the work of art much more significant. And in the sense, there are some studies that has been made by Clint Brooks, the new critic. And he studied and he hinted the images used in Macbeth in his very popular work of art, Well Wrought On. Well Wrought On is a critical, say, essay. So we find Clint Brooks' ideas 
critical thoughts and insights in one rota. New critics found implicit interaction in imagery and theme of novel, drama and poetry. So there is so not just image in single or in isolation, but image as a whole, its relations to the other images. If an image is used, in what way another image has been used? So there is an interaction, implicit interaction in imagery, and that is going to help these so-called uh, structure, in the so-called structure of the literary text. So in this way, this uh, so-called imagery is extremely useful for our understanding. Okay, so uh, when we study images or imagery, you will find the um, very good book on, there is an enough, uh, say, study material or on the expression, an essay has been developed by Amateur Brahms in his glossary. Furthermore, you can go through the Rogers Dictionary of Literary Dance, Oxford Dictionary of Literary Dance, at the same time, you can also go through some of the critical books that is available in the library, just like DSL-8. And you can also go through the, the term like simile, term like metaphor, and both of these terms will help you to underscore the use of images and imagery. So uh, when we study, we have to gather our material in this way and develop a critical insight, thematic insight, and we must form our ideas and concepts on this particular topic. And it will be extremely useful for these books that I told you are going to be extremely useful for your study. These words, so we have studied today, image. Thank you.